All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And I've been going over the book by Terry Felt Morris, Web Development and Design Foundations with HTML5, 8th edition. We're up to chapter 9 of 14. And in chapter 9, we talk about HTML forms. Most people who have ever gone out on the internet to do virtually anything have filled out a form at one time or another. So, we'll start by talking about some common uses of forms on web pages, and we'll actually create a form. The form will have a lot of different types of tags in it, not just a form tag, different types of input tags, text area, select element, and there's a lot of other ones that we'll, we'll go over too. Then we'll talk about how we can add accessibility features to forms by do, using things like tap index. We'll associate form controls with labels, field sets, and legends. We'll create custom image buttons and just use the regular button element. Then we'll come in and start to use CSS to style a form to make it look more professional. Finally, we'll go in and we'll talk about some of the new HTML5 controls for forms, such as the email and URL controls. All right. And the chapter ends by kind of going away from this and talking a little bit about server-side processing. And uh, so we'll hit that at the end. Okay. So as mentioned here, forms are used all over the web. Typically, they're used to accept some kind of information. They give you some examples, but there are just too many to, to mention. Okay. Let's do this. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to look at this form right here, and I'm going to see if I can replicate this form that you see right here. All right, and I'm literally, so let's see, it's going to be interesting because I'm going to see if I can replicate that form right before your eyes. All right, and I'll do it kind of in a piecemeal type of way, so I'll put a little bit of stuff in there and then run it so you can see it. First thing we see there is shipping, address, Entry. Let's make that an H1 tag. Shipping, address, entry. Now I'm not going to go and, and run that now because that's all you'd see would be that tag. Forms are within form tags. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have here is we're going to put in a label. And we're going to say four equals, this, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the chapter, but name. We're associating the label that says name in it. We're associating that with this label right here, with this text box right here. All right. So now we're going to say input type equals text name equal name, which looks a little weird. ID equal name and we'll leave it just like that so let's see with what we've done so far what it looks like okay now is it perfect by no means is it not it is not perfect but you can already see it it's starting to come together a little bit so i'm going to put the company the uh, address line one address line two and city in there right now and i'm going to cheat a little bit by grabbing these. So company, address line one, address line two, city. Okay, so now I have to change all of these. So this will be ADDR1, address line one, ADDR1, ADDR1, might be faster for me to take this, paste that in, and change that to ADDR2, 2, 2, 2. Okay, then this becomes city. change this in just a minute, but I guess I put in one too many. Oh, I didn't put it company. So let me move this 
back up to the top right under name and we'll change this to company Literally, I've spent minutes on this, but let's see what we have. Okay, well, it doesn't look very good. No, it doesn't. Okay, well, let's fix it so it looks a little nicer. And we're going to make it fix it with a very easy fix. Before each one of our label tags, we're going to put a BR tag. Let's see what that does. Before each label. So now let's see if we made it look a little nicer. Oh, it's looking better. Now you might say that they don't line up. That's that's CSS. We don't care about that right now. Okay. So we've got the name. We've got the company, the address, line one, the address line two, and the city. So next we need state. Now that's going to be done a little bit differently. These were all done. If we take a minute to go back and look at this. BR tag is a line break. Forms are within form tags. There's the beginning. There's the end. Now, typically, when you, at the end of your form, you're going to have a button that says submit or something like that. So you'll typically have this action equal, and there'll be some kind of a file you call on the server. Now, I don't want to call anything, so I'm just going to send it right back to itself. So I'll put the hashtag there. And then you also say method equals and you say either post or you say get. You don't have to worry about those right now. The point is, we're saying we've got a label. That label is being associated with name. And what's name? That's the text box down here. This is just some random text that we put in. It says name. This is a text box tag. It's type text. Its name is name and its ID is name. So notice we've got name and ID, and they both have the same name. It looks a little strange. ID is for what we've used before. Remember we used classes and we used IDs? That's what that idea is. The name is used typically with server-side programming, like, for example, PHP. I'm not going to go into that right now, but just so you're aware of it. Okay? All right. Now, if we look at what's in here, again, we're up to the state. Well, the state's a little bit different. With the state, we need what's called a select tag. All right, and in those select tags, <clears throat> we're going to have options. And let's put in, for example, uh, Alabama, and this isn't real complete what I'm doing, but I'm just going to try to get you something so you can see it. We'll put in five states. Arizona, uh, New York, Ohio, I'm just trying to put some in here you know, alphabetically, and Pennsylvania. Now, if I did put it incorrectly, you'll know right away. And if I didn't, you'll know right away also. There we go. See what we have? All right. One thing we forgot was before we needed our label again, we needed another label in here. And that label should be for state, and it should say state. All right. Select, I think we can put an ID here, equals state. And I think we can put a name, equals state. I think we can do that without any problem. And notice what we have now. Now, 
Next, we have a zip code. All right, and you'll notice that zip code is actually broken into two fields with a hyphen between them. Not a problem. So first, let me grab a label and an input. And for the label, we'll just put here zip. And this says zip code. And we'll call this um, that'll be a type text. This will be zip. And this will be zip. But I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put in here a minus sign for a hyphen. And I'm going to call this zip2. Oops, zip2. And I'm going to call this zip2. So now let's see what we have. Okay. Again, it isn't perfect, but you see what's going on here. All right. Okay. Next, I'm going to steal the code that I put from over here, and I'm going to bring it down here. And here, oh, I also needed the label. And this says country. Throw in a couple countries here. How about uh, Canada country? We'll put in Canada anyway. Canada, we'll put in uh, how about uh, New Zealand? Russia? United States? And we'll put in here because I'm trying to keep this alphabetized. Zimbabwe. I don't know if I spelled that right or not, but you get the idea. So, all right. The only thing that's left here is we have two buttons at the bottom that say continue and clear all. Let's put those in. Input. Type equals submit. And what that means is when I click that button, I want whatever file I would normally call in here to be called. All right? So it says continue. So value equal continue. All right? And another input. Type equal reset, which means that when you click that button, set everything back to its default value. Equal clear all. Now these two buttons are probably going to butt up right against one another, so let's put a couple blank spaces in between here. So let's see now what we've got for our completed form. Oh, I forgot, I forgot to put a line break there. And I guess we don't even need those two spaces. Probably it'll be okay without them. So let's put a line break here. And take a look now, hopefully, at our completed product. There we go. All right. Now, again, you can say that this doesn't look very good. It really it doesn't look like it does, you know, in the book. Well, let's just make a couple changes, okay? Such as, well, let's say, let's go into our CSS. And in our CSS, let's say that we want labels to all have a width of 100 pixels. And it's the only change I've made. So does it look any better now? No. Hmm. 
put a couple hundred pixels and we want to uh, is it display I'm trying to remember if it's inline block block inline could say block and it's going to look a lot different okay but just so you see it okay make me a liar well let's go back to the book you saw me build the form now okay so did a form an HTML element that organizes I put the form controls on it. I put on text boxes, no check boxes, but I put on buttons and I put on labels and I put on drop downs. Okay. The key thing about using a form is from what I showed you here, notice if I do put in stuff here, I'm going to throw stuff into all of these. Notice what happens when I click the clear all button. Boom. Everything goes back to its default values. Also, should be able to see this. In fact, I'm going to make a change here where I put in here, I put method equal post. I'm going to change that to get. And the reason is because I want you to be able to see the information that's going to be sent. So, Jeff Scott Rankin. Technical College. There's one address. There's Wentzville. Well, we don't have we don't have any state. Let's make it Ohio. Okay, and we'll just leave it like that. Uh, the United States. Fine. Now, when I click Continue, uh, I thought it was going to show the information up here, but it's no big deal. Okay. The point is, you saw that literally something was sent, and again, you also saw that when I started putting stuff into here. Well, no matter what I put in here, no matter what I chose here, when I click the button that said reset, everything goes back to its default values. All right, so keep that in mind. So a form is something that you do on the client side, so something you fill out. What we're going to look at as we go into this is also how you can do some validation of the form on the client side. If you do no validation of the form on the client side and you click the button and it sends it out to a server, if the server determines that there are some errors with the form, then it has to send it back to the client again. So you're making the server do work that it shouldn't have to do. The server works with the form and it grabs that data that it's been given and it might send back an email thanking them for you know setting them telling them that they're set that maybe they signed up for an account updating a database or something it could be a lot of different things that end up getting done so here's some of the stuff you saw the form tag contains the form elements so everything is within the beginning form tag and the ending form tag at the end now we looked at input and I only use text but you can also use it for radio buttons, check boxes, and for regular buttons. And just to show you this, this isn't something that they've put in that form, but I'm going to put it in anyway. All right, so let's add a couple other things here before our button. So let's put in oops, input type equal radio. All right. Uh, I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold off on that. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right syntax. So we're going to look at radio buttons and check boxes in just a minute. A text area is a different one. But that one we can't put in right now. So we'll put in this. Text area. And I'm going to put in here rows equal 10, calls equal 25. That's the size of it text area. And notice after we do this, how much different, watch how much push down these buttons are going to be. Okay? 
and I didn't I forgot to put a uh, line break there but that's a text area so a lot of times for a text area what you're going to end up having there let's put another line break here and uh, we'll put another line break here okay <clears throat> quite often though what you end up having in there let's put another label in is you'll have something like <clears throat> you know might say comments or message or something like that well, my M key is sticking a little bit okay so there you go So this is what forms are all about, are being able to put controls on screen that a user can fill out, all right, and based on, all right, based on what they put in there, you can send it out to a server someplace. Now, I mentioned some of these met methods before, some of these attributes, I should say. Action, again, is the server-side file or program that gets called when you press your submit button. You can do this doing a get or doing a post. The difference between doing a get and doing a post, just so you're aware of it, when you do a post, all of that information that you end up sending so when you do a post, all of that information that you end up sending all of that information ends up getting put right on your uh, right in your address bar, all the sent information. So anybody can see it. So you don't use get when the information needs to be secure. You wouldn't use get for passwords or uh, credit card numbers, etc. There you'd use post, because with post it's more secure. The form data is passed in, but it's inside of what's called the HTTP header. The name and the ID I mentioned to you before, the ID, you can use it with CSS, and we can use it later on with jQuery. You'll see that with JavaScript. The name is typically used with the server side. So the input text box, I didn't show you all these, but I gave you the name and I gave you the ID. We could give it a size, a max length, and a value. I want to show you all those, size, max length, and value. So let's just grab the first one that we put in here. That was name. Okay. So we could say size equal 25. You can put this over multiple lines and make it a little bit easier to read. Okay. Max length. We're going to set that for now just so you see it equal to 10. And value will set equal to name. How about name here? Okay. So what changed when we did that? Let's look. Our name got bigger. And now it says name here. Okay? And if we start typing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I can't keep typing because I said the max length that we could type in there was 10. Okay? Now, you don't typically put value in there. You typically put in what's called placeholder. So I'm going to say placeholder equals name here. You might think it doesn't look very different. But notice that's kind of grayed now. And as soon as I put my mouse in there and I start typing, that goes away. Okay. All right. So I showed you most of those. Text area, I showed you the name and the ID. I showed you the columns and the rows. I already did that. It's a scrolling text box. The submit button I showed you. We had type equals submit, we gave it a name, we gave it an ID, we gave it a value. Notice again, the submit button triggers the action. 
So it's typically it's going to be whatever is in that uh, method call that we had up in the form tag. It's going to call that particular file on the server. The reset, we showed you that, and I mentioned how it sets everything back to its default values. So you've seen these. All right, so I guess the author asks you to build this one, which is even easier than the one, so you should be able to actually do that one now. Okay, text box, text box, text box, text area, button, button, label, 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 and probably like an H1 tag. All right, notice you can have a password input box, so type equal password. Well, it looks just like what we saw before, except it's a password. So let's say we came in here and we said name and before company, before company, let's go back and reset all this stuff. We'll get rid of everything that we set here. Okay. But I'm going to come through back in here. And in the second line here, where instead of name, we're going to call this password. And we'll call this password. And we'll call this password. Now, I'm purposely making a mistake in here, just so you know. You may or may not be able to spot it. Okay, so if we go back and we run this, we now have another field in there that says password. But notice, you can see everything that's typed in there. Well, you don't want that in a password. So instead of saying type equal text, I say type equals password. And now notice that once I do that, and I come in here, and I start typing, you can't see it. It'll come up as either dots or asterisks, depending on the type of system that you're using. All right. Checkbox. Okay. So we want to type equal checkbox. We want the name, the ID, checked, and the value. Okay, so let's look at this one. Um, trying to think of something. Okay, this will be kind of silly, but we'll put this in here anyway. So I'm going to use that one. Come back to here. Again, I don't know why you would ask something like this on a form, but just to, to you know, for completeness sake, we'll put it in here. So again, I'm going to say... Input type equal checkbox name equal I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go out to W3 Schools and I'm going to grab one of their examples. So HTML checkbox example. I'm sure this one will work. I'll make some superficial changes to it. It is 8.30 at night and I'm probably too tired to be doing this lecture right now, but you know what? I'm doing it anyway. Okay. So we're going to put here where I've got all this. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to put a label in there for equal. We're going to say fav. Uh, and it's going to say favorite color. this in. I'm going to have to make a lot of changes to this, but it's okay. Input type equal checkbox. This will be fav. This will be fav. This will be red. We're going to just have three colors. Green. So we'll say red. And we're not going to put a line between each one. We're going to put a couple of blank spaces. So this will be green. I'm not going to worry about the check right now. So 
this will be green. And again, I'll have my non-breaking spaces. And let's put one more in. So this last one will be blue. I won't need spaces on the end of this. Instead, I'll put a line break there and blue. And let's see if I did it correctly or not. Favorite color, red, green, blue. Notice I can choose none, one, two, or all three. Okay? All right. Let's put down below that We're going to put another one, but we're going to call this one gender, gender, and instead of checkbox, we're going to say here radial, and radial, the name will be gender, and the values will be female and male. Typically, and I didn't show that in here, but this, these should have probably all been for values, probably been lowercase. And again, female. And male. So basically all I did was I changed it from type equal checkbox to type equal radio. And I should have those actually before my buttons. So we have now, there's our radio buttons. The difference is only one of these can be active. And as soon as I click one, the other one becomes unclicked. All right. So again, in my desire here to show you as much as I possibly can, I'm creating a very ugly form, but I'm putting most of the stuff in here that we've already looked at. So again, with a checkbox, you can choose zero or more of these items. So choose a browser you use. We could have none of them, any one, any two, or all three. Here, if we set it up this way, Okay, you can only choose one. So radio buttons are off of the old um, AM radio buttons that we used to have. And they're set up so that, you know, with an old AM radio, you can only press one button. You had the, the kind of clunky buttons that you press to set the, you know, to, to change the radio stations. That's what they're based off of. You can have hidden fields. Why would you have a field that was hidden? If you have a field that's hidden, it's something that's needed in the form, but it's not displayed on the page. Maybe, for example, you've got a form that you're creating for a company, and as soon as you choose what state you're from, it figures out the tax rate for you. So it needs to have the tax rate on there, but it doesn't need to show you the tax rate. That would be an example of a hidden field that wouldn't be displayed on a page. Select list, I showed you that with the states. They're also known as select boxes, drop down list, drop down list box, option boxes. They go by all sorts of names. All right. I showed you the options in here also, so nothing new. Okay. I think, I think right here is a good place to stop.